Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, CCN is, is now starting. I'm Thomas Nasolaris. I'm an assistant professor of neuroscience at MUSC in Charleston, South Carolina. And I am one of nine uh, co-organizers of the inaugural conference on cognitive computational neuroscience. And I'm really thrilled and honored to welcome all of you on their behalf. I'm going to spend just a few minutes providing some context and a little bit of the history of how this, this conference came to be, and to provide a, a possible answer, one of the possible answers for why we're here. Um, so I'll give you a little backstory. Um, as the conference was originally conceived, CCN was quite a bit more narrow than the conference you're attending. And it emerged just about two, at least the idea emerged about two years ago, when Kendra Kay, uh, my co-organizer and I, were having a drink and discussing the state of the field of cognitive neuroscience. So Kendrick and I have known each other for many years, and we share a number of uh, perspectives and beliefs, and many of which can be traced back to our time as young trainees in Jack Gallant's lab. <laughs> um, now, while we were in that lab, we were sort of drilled in this very um, particular mindset in which you would sort of view um, uh, think of cognitive neuroscience as a set of problems that could that really required a computational solution, and that neuroscientists really needed to train themselves in the ways of computation, and uh, to just perhaps a, a further abuse the analogy, you could view cognitive neuroscience as a kind of combat against this weirdly resilient enemy um, that could only be overcome by the application of computational force. Okay, so then the analogy just completely breaks down at this point, but it, it establishes, I think, an important context, um, which is that, you know, if you have a very specific point of view, it's natural to try to seek out other peoples who you think might share it. And that night, when we sort of uh, thought of CCN, we were talking about the fact that there were many other labs that seemed to share our perspective. But that if we, if they, if these labs, these groups who were producing uh, inspiring cognitive neuroscience from a very computational um, point of view, if, if, if the groups were not in our particular subspecialty of, of vision, we tended not to run into them very often. And we made a, we made a list of, of people that we admire, and many of them are registered for the conference, I'm, I'm happy to say. And we also thought through the, the lists of conferences that we regularly attend which we love and, and will continue to attend, but we noticed that they were either deliberately focused on our modality of vision or uh, tended to emphasize the study of the brain at, at, a, at a scale that's finer than the, the cognitive scale that preoccupies us, or in some cases were just sort of too big to gather the groups of researchers that we um, had in mind in, in high enough density. Um, so uh, we thought, well, there seems to be this, this community, an implicit sort of community of researchers who, of cognitive neuroscientists who take and are pushing computational approaches, uh, but we have no one place to go and, and meet them, at least on a regular basis. So we thought, let's, let's form this conference and then attend it, which is what we're doing. Um, so we, we shopped this idea around at SFN, uh, just a, a few, I think a few weeks later. And we were encouraged. A lot of people seemed to think that there was a need for this sort of conference, in particular Russ Poldrack and Nico Kriegescourt, who joined us in forming a committee to actually pull this conference off. It was a sort of proto-committee at first. We had regular Skype meetings, and we spent a lot of time at first not doing a lot of steering and mostly just talking about what we wanted the conference to actually be and we want, what we wanted the conference to mean. And um, Two things sort of stand out uh, for, uh, for in my memory of these of these conversations. Uh, one of them, and, because, and they stand out because I think they were very clarifying. One of them was Nico's insistence from from the beginning that we call the com the conference cognitive computational neuroscience and uh, not <laughs> CCN. All right. So this CCN, sorry, this this CCN and not that CCN. All right. So this is a totally good name. It's totally adequate, and it describes it basically describes the idea that Kendrick and I pitched. But uh, Nico pointed out, and I agree with him, that this better aligns with 
the ordering of the principles that, that were motivating us as a group. And that's the, the primacy of, of the brain as an object of study, the conviction that the only way to understand the brain is by formulating the correct computational principles, and that this holds at any scale, uh, including the scale that we just happen to be have the most interest in. Another thing that, um, another thing that really uh, stood out in my mind uh, was the agreement that emerged rather early that the conference would be just infinitely better if it included not just neuroscientists. Um, if you're going to have a conference that focuses on computational principles, it makes sense to try to include the people and the fields who are discovering them. Um, and uh, in, in, in recent years, there has been a tremendous amount of progress in the computational fields. I'm thinking, of course, of advances in deep learning, uh, reinforcement learning, and an ever-deepening understanding of probabilistic inference and its, its contacts with cognition. Um, a lot of this work is coming out of art the field of artificial intelligence and also cognitive science. Now, it makes sense to uh, try to include uh, researchers from these groups in a neuroscience conference, not just because they're publishing lots of nature and science articles, but because they are connected, these fields, to neuroscience and to each other in a very deep, but also a number of very obvious ways. Um, one of the ways that they're connected is that each of these fields serves as a model for the ideals of the other. So for example, if you're a neuroscientist and your goal is to develop models of how the brain produces cognition, the best model you could do, assuming that it does uh, uh, model the brain adequately, is to produce, to generate a model that, that actually does produce cognition, which is what your friends in AI are, are actually trying to do. And if you're working in AI, trying to build systems that solve, um, that perform tasks or, or skills that you hope will someday um, merge into human intelligence or that somehow decompose the skills that human uh, intelligence consists of, um, you will probably want to take a look at what's going on in cognitive science. Because chess and Jeopardy may not be the primitive set of skills that humans use. Now, I could complete this loop and actually go around and around, and so could all of you. Uh, I think you get the point, though. It's like um, these fields are really almost inseparable at a, co at a conceptual level. It's almost as if the, the metaphor of neuroscience as a form of combat is totally wrong, and that we should think of it as just one petal in a three-petal flower. And um, in fact, we kind of went with this three-petal conceit, and it became our logo. And our explicit vision um, became the, the attempt to synthesize these fields uh, with the mechanism of a conference. Pretty shortly thereafter, we, at least it seems to me in my memory, we were joined by five other outstanding scientists who brought the range of knowledge and expertise that was really required to push this, to push this vision forward. And of course, one of our um, most important tasks was to uh, re uh, recruit a, a roster of, of speakers that would balance out the perspectives of these disciplines. And we're very um, um, honored and, and excited that these speakers have agreed to join us and share their work with us for the next three days. Now, I want to point out that we realize there's nothing terribly novel about the idea of combining these disciplines as a, as a way of understanding cognition. There have been a lot of uh, previous attempts to do this over the decades. In fact, in 2005, there was a conference called CCN with very similar intent. It was organized by uh, Randy O'Reilly and John Cohen. And that, that conference deserves credit. It serves as a, pre a precedence for what we're doing. And it goes to show that, that this idea of combining disciplines is, is uncontroversial, is accepted. But what is controversial and a bit more mysterious is what happens when you combine them. And one of the things that we are, um, one, one of the ways of answering what we're, what we're here to do over the next three days, days is to find out what goes on right there. Now, we're all reasonable and probably friendly people. So what happens 
over the next few days could be just harmonious and chill like a hippie music festival. Or I think more likely, or equally likely at least, it could resemble the action in a gladiatorial pit. We'll find out. Either way, our job is to uh, foment interaction between groups. Um, and accordingly, we've scheduled, a, I think, a, a, an amount, of, an unusually large amount of time for a single track session to debate. And we're very, um, again, very thankful that these uh, uh, field leaders will be joining us for discussion and will be moderating two uh, panel debates over the, the coming days. Um, another thing that is important for uniting disciplines, we feel, is tutorials because we're a lot less likely to spend the next three days hacking at each other if we understand each other's languages and methods. And we're, again, very grateful to these speakers for taking on the task of putting together broadly accessible tutorials. That is the basic history and some of the motivation for CCN. I need now to thank all of the many people and institutes that made CCN possible, of course. I want to start with our advisory committee. And I want to single out um, Oda Leva, who gave us a lot of encouragement and advice early on. And I also want to mention the many members of this group who are also uh, founders, in some cases, and, and organizers of COSIGN, which serves as the really inspiring precedent for what we're trying to do. Um, I really want to thank our government sponsors, the NSF and the Office of Naval, Naval Research. The NSF provided the grant that funded our, that is funding our student awardees, and they deserve our congratulations as well. Um, I, of course, want to gratefully acknowledge our private sponsors. Um, these things cost money, and we're really grateful for their support. And I want to also thank our management company for uh, who will be keeping the, the, the meeting running smoothly over the next three days. And finally, uh, there's one member of the advisory, or the, sorry, the, the steering committee that I want to single out for thanks, Ali Fletcher. She is not able to be here today um, at the conference. She sends her regrets. Uh, when I think about the history of organizing the conference over the past year, I kind of divide it into the pre-Ali phase and then the Ali phase. And not surprisingly, uh, or at least there was no coincidence, I think that most of the work we got done took place during the alley phase. She put an enormous amount of effort into this. Finally, I obviously want to thank all of you for coming to this first conference. I think the reception and the, the, the participation that we're, that we're getting uh, means that we're going to have a really exciting conference. All right, and now I will turn this over to Nico, who will begin introductions. Or Amazing. Okay. Uh, Cognitive Computational Neuroscience is the name of this conference. It's not the name of a field, right? So um, we're all very aware that it's very uncertain. It's totally unclear whether uh, it's, it's ever going to be a field, whether it can be a field, right? Because we've got these three disciplines, and they're very different in lots of ways. They have different interests, they have different languages, and they have very different approaches. So uh, can they work together? Can they come together? I think it's not a foregone conclusion at all. So in this first session, which is the uh, Kavli uh, opening keynote discussion, uh, sponsored generously by the Kavli Foundation, we're going to start with three keynotes, each highlighting one of the disciplines, one for cognitive science, one for computational neuroscience, and one for AI. And uh, I'm desperately confident that this will highlight how different these disciplines really are, right? This is going to be a little bit painful, so brace yourself, but I'm hopeful that in the discussion afterwards, um, we'll find, explore ways for these disciplines to start to work together. The session will be chaired and the discussion moderated by Jim DiCarlo. Jim is the Peter de Flores Professor of Neuroscience at the McGovern Institute at MIT. He's also head of the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences uh, at MIT. Uh, I asked him what his uh, field was and he said reverse engineering the mind equals cognitive science plus engineering AI plus 
neuroscience. So that is, uh, I think, the perfect person. <laughs> you are in good hands for this, this session, and I'll hand over to Jim. Okay. Uh, welcome to all of you. I want to thank uh, Nico for that kind introduction and the other organizers for really putting this meeting together. Uh, it's something that many of us have talked about, but it's great that you guys have actually gotten this done. So this is wonderful. I'm just honored to play this little small role in it here. So our hope for the first session here is, as Nico said, to jumpstart the conversation about how these three areas, cognitive science, computational neuroscience, and what I'll call AI machine learning, um, can maybe interact to have closer working relationships. Um, many of us think they need to in some way to get the job done. But we'll uh, hopefully return to that in the discussion. As Nico said, we're going to have a bunch of talks, three talks, one from each area. Here's how things are going to go. We're going to have 40 minutes per talk. It will be a hard stop at 40 to keep things on time. There may be time for a few questions, te quest technical questions about each talk at the end of those talks. We'll have one talk in cognitive science, one from computational neuroscience, and one from AI and machine learning. Um, again, there'll be a hard stop on that. The, after the second talk, there'll be a coffee break for 20 minutes. Um, and then after the third talk, which is the AI machine learning talk, we'll have three additional panelists join us. So a total of six people essentially spanning those three disciplines, roughly two in each. And then we'll have a panel discussion up here for an hour. And I think that's going to be the most interesting part of this. And that's where we'll solicit. I will try to make things provocative, but I will also uh, ask for audience participation at that point. So please think ahead for your either gladiator questions, I hope. Um, so let me start in the interest of time to just get going with the first speaker. Um, the, and, and I'm going to keep these intros brief, again, in the interest of time. The first speaker today is Professor Josh Tenenbaum. Uh, Josh is representing cognitive science. Um, Josh, just briefly for students in the room, Josh did his undergrad in physics, a PhD in cognitive science at MIT, was briefly an assistant professor at Stanford. He's now a professor of computational cognitive sciences in our Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences at MIT. Um, and again, he lists his field as, quote, computational cognitive science. And um, Josh is widely known for his work on computational models of the mind and the influences of those models on machine learning and AI. Um, his twin goals, as he puts it, are to reverse engineer distinctly human aspects of intelligence, number one, and two, to use what we learn to build more human-like intelligent machine intelligence in machines. And I think Josh points out he, like many of us, sees these goals as inextricably linked. And I think you'll hopefully see that in his talk. So with that, we'll introduce Josh. Thank you. 